Welcome. Welcome. Okay, today we are doing a book video. Um, me and Savannah, we love to read, and today we are home. We're in Savannah's room in front of her bookshelf. Wow, I deconstructed it for this video. And she took a ton of books off um, to talk about, and so she has a ton of paperbacks and hardbacks. And all the books I've recently read have been on my Kindle. So we're going to go over some of the books that we've read, both of us, a lot mm -hmm. of books you've read just by yourself. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about them because we've got a lot to say. Okay, first category, what do you want to start with? Um, so I've got two different sides here. We've got like groups of books, either series or authors, and on this side, it's more like different genres. These are two books that, so I've been in my romance era lately mm -hmm. um, for the past like year-ish. Before that, I was pretty much exclusively like thriller horror vibes, um, Same. but a lot of these are, at least have romance involved. Um, so this is a book that I heard a lot about, and it's called The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas, mm -hmm. and it's super cute. And so the tropes in this book are um, enemies to lovers, workplace romance, um, destination wedding, fake dating. Um, so fake I, dating. fake dating is one of my favorite tropes. And so this was like Enemy super, lovers, yeah. super, super fun to read. Um, and so then she came out with the book, like maybe last year, earlier this year, um, the American roommate experience. And this is super cute. And the tropes in this are, uh, like forced proximity, stuff like that. And so these two books, the characters in this book are in this book, but they're technically considered standalone. But if I were to read them, definitely read this one first and then follow up with this one. So those are two, two pretty fun ones and they have a little bit of spice in them, which is always fun. Okay, next. Yeah. Okay, next, another, another, all of these are considered standalone, but I don't think they are. Um, so this one, it happened one summer. So as you can see based on the cover, he's like a fisherman from like upstate Washington and she is an influencer from Los Angeles. So this is like grumpy sunshine trope. Mm -hmm. This is opposites attract trope and uh, forced proximity. So this is an excellent book, um, like very rugged man style. She goes to his hometown. And then the follow-up book is about her sister. Um, and then his best friend is who that is. So this is called Hook, Line, and Sinker. So definitely read this one first and this one next. Um, super cute romance and definitely has some spice. Savannah likes spice. Love the spice. Okay, keep going. Yeah, keep going. So one of my favorite authors of all time, pretty new one, pretty popular, so you might be familiar, is Emily Henry. She's super, super, super popular. She only has four books. I have all four of them. I'm obsessed. Um, and she writes books about people that like books, um, particularly her first ones. So I think this was her first one. Or actually, Beach Read. Beach Read was her first one. This is my second favorite. Um, this is super good. I'm I'm like, some of her books run together for me. I like forget because yeah. it's been a minute since I read them. Um, but a lot of hers are either, um, yeah, this is like the Polar Opposites one, which I really like. And they're both writers, like authors. Um, and then this one also, yeah, like bookstore owners. Um, this one's my favorite out of all of them, book lovers. I think it's the best beach read I'd put right behind that. And then I would say people we meet on vacation and happy place, which just came out a few months ago, um, are tied for a third. This one is a bit different than her other ones. This talks a lot about like female friendship. It's very empowering by the end. And it's like friends that grow through like a decade of life. Mm -hmm. Um, so this one's a lot more like less about romance. Um, and like most of the book is in her head. And it's like more about her thoughts and what's actually happening. And this is like, this is like one week at a cabin, like the entire thing. And then it goes back and forth in time. Oh, um, so that was really good. And then this was like, um, this is like 10 years of friendship. So this is like the ultimate friends to lovers. Mm. Um, so anyways, Emily Henry is phenomenal. I recommend her to everyone. And hers are always great summer reads. Other one of my favorite authors of all time, which, you know, is not surprising is Taylor Jenkins Reid. 
I only have four of her books. Actually, my birthday's in a few weeks and I'm asking for the rest of hers because I'm so obsessed with her writing style is phenomenal. Like you can just fly through it so easily. And almost all of hers are, like a lot of hers are, his, they're like historical fiction, but it doesn't feel historical. Like they're based in like the 50s or 60s or 70s or even the 30s. Um, so this was the first one of hers I ever read, Malibu Rising. Um, based on the cover, you think it's like this fun summer read. I would disagree with that. I don't think it's a fun summer read. It's an excellent read though. Um, this is about like four siblings um, through their lives with, you know, the just the trials and tribulations of like their parents and stuff like that. So excellent read, really love. I actually just read this one recently, One True Loves. Um, essentially, this is about um, a girl marries her high school sweetheart. He goes missing, presumed dead. She gets engaged to someone many years later. And so then he comes back from the dead and says, I'm coming home. So now she has a fiance and a husband. So navigating that relationship, they came out with a movie, great cast, but I did not think it did it justice, but no movies do, but that was great. Um, these two are my favorites of hers. Daisy Jones and the Six, you probably know this came out as uh, an Amazon Prime show. They did excellent. They quoted so much of the book, which I really loved, only changed a few things. But this is about a rock band mm -hmm. in the 60s and 70s, which is like my favorite era. This is my favorite type of music too. Um, so super, super love this. And this is set up, the whole book is interview style. Um, so this is them like 30 years later talking about this time. Um, so it's all interview style, which I didn't think I could get behind, but I absolutely loved it. It was very easy to read. And then lastly, this is my favorite book of hers, I think. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was um, about this woman. Evelyn Hugo was, who was this Hollywood, like Marilyn Monroe type. Um, and she had seven husbands. And so the book is in seven parts. And mm. so it'll be about each of her, each of her husbands through her life from like, I think it was like the thirties through about like 2000, something like that. Yeah. Um, really, really, really interesting. Like, I mean, the cover alone, like I want to wear that green dress. I'm ready. <laughs> Count me in. So, but I am really looking forward to reading her other books because I think her writing style is unmatched. Her books always make me cry. So they're not like the lightest, mm. but they make you feel something. That's a good um, note, yeah. Yeah, super, super, super good. Okay, another author I really love, Jasmine Guillory, I think is how you say it. Yeah, Guillory. This is the first book of hers I read, uh, The Proposal, and all of hers are so wholesome, um, but she does have a lot of, um, themes in her books that talk about important things, whether it's like politics or race or anything like that. Um, and so it has really great representation of black main characters mm -hmm. in her books. So this is the proposal. This is my favorite out of all of hers I read. Ooh, I don't know. Actually, for the proposal and party of two are my favorite. So this is like, he's a politician and she's like a normal you know, person in the Ooh. community and she like shows him what it's really like. Mm. You know, not being famous. So that one was excellent. And then while we were dating, She's the famous movie actress and he's like a filmmaker um, that she meets. So that was really fun. Oh, oh, but, oh, they're all so good. This might be my favorite. This is like two best friends at a wedding. Mm -hmm. She's like the maid of honor and he's like the best man or something. It's been probably three years since I've read this, but so, so, so good. So I, I love, love, love her books. And all of, a lot of her books are like, they're older characters. So it'll be like mm. in their 30s, which I feel like I relate to so much more than like a 19 year old. Agreed. Um, yeah, so those are excellent. Okay, this is in my top three favorite books of all time. It also wow. came out, which is saying a lot for me. Um, it also came out as a Hulu show, which that is like, other than Harry Potter, that is like the closest thing a book has ever gotten to the movie. Like it was so, so, so good. Oh, okay. Um, so this is Normal People by Sally Rooney. I am obsessed with this. It's so good. It's She writes in a very unique writing style in the sense that she doesn't use quotations. And at first it took me a minute to get into that writing style because it can sometimes be hard to follow. Um, but once you get in it, it is so good. And it's just about this, this couple um, that are like friends and not friends and friends with benefits and all these things throughout like several years of their life. Um, it is excellent. I also highly, highly, highly recommend the Hulu show because it's Paul Mescal and Daisy Edgar Jones, who are two of my favorite actresses or actors after this. Um, so I super, super love this book. She also came out with Conversations with Friends, which is not as good, but it is still an excellent read. Um, and this is about a love triangle 
Um, so that's always kind of fun. Um, but her books are excellent. And this is also a Hulu show, actually, which I really loved. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so much knowledge. I know. I'm, like, actually impressed. I remember so much about these books. Yeah. Um, and then this is also, this has been a recent favorite of mine. Um, I say recent in the last three years. Um, so this is Allie Hazelwood. I'm sure you've seen this book particularly. This blew up when it first came out. Um, so Allie Hazelwood is actually a professor. So she actually has her PhD and she works as a professor. And so all of her books are very academic, STEM intense. Um, if you don't know, I am starting my PhD um, in like three weeks. So I am like really in and I work with STEM people, and so I'm really, I know, right? I know. I'm, like, really into this. Um, so if you like anything, like, academic-related, um, I think you'd really like this. A note I will say is everything is, like, grad school or professionals. So it's not, like, undergrad. So if, mm. if you're an undergrad, you might not relate as much to it. Um, but this but she does. But I do because I'm a grad student, and I work in labs. <laughs> um, but she's a grad student in this book, and that's... Um, a young professor, Ooh. which is like, in my mind, like, Scandalous. so unlikely in real life, but this book is so, so, so good. I'm obsessed with it, and it definitely has some smut in it, which I like. And then her second book, Love on the Brain, which I love, so she is like, has piercings and like, colored hair, and she's so cool, and he is like, the most uptight NASA scientist, <laughs> and I love NASA, and yeah. so this one was a really fun read for me. And then this is the one that like just recently came out. Um, and so I think this is her most like political in the sense that it talks a lot about academic politics of hiring. Um, and so like he's an experimentalist and she's a theorist. And if you don't know, like in STEM, big debate between like who's better. Um, and so this was a lot about that. And so that was a really fun read. And I'm just obsessed with all of her books. But she actually just announced, my friend Diana and I were talking about, she just announced she's coming out with like a vampire book and we were like we have to immediately read it like it's so and she was saying like you know my publishers finally agreed to let me do it so this is like total left field i love vampire books. like i'm immediately going to be reading it um so yeah wow i love her anyways that those are like my big authors i like recommend 100 percent of the time i have some authors yes um, okay let's hear it Okay, so I've just been reading on my Kindle recently because sustainable. it feels so easy to get a book on here because you just click buy and you don't feel like you're buying anything, which I really like. Um, and so, we share an Amazon account, and so we, yeah, get, so to we, we get to read, read each together. other's books. Mm -hmm. So let me see. So this is a series that I've read. Um, it's called A Touch of Darkness. And it's um, Hades and Persephone. Um, it's a retelling of their love story. And it's very interesting. And it's fantasy um, and stuff. So, like, if you're into that, which I am. So, then yeah. it's not as much. I'm not into it as much. But I am willing to try. I've been, like, I have, like, so many books I haven't read on yeah. this bookshelf that I, like, Yes. I need to commit and read it, but I've heard great things. Yeah, I actually, um, I was looking at it at Barnes & Noble, and a worker came up, and she's like, oh my god, if you like smut, this is for you. <laughs> and I didn't get it then, because I'm like, oh, okay. But then I saw it on here, uh, and then it, had, it was like on sale on Kindle, so I read that, and that's super good. I just um, saw it at the bookstore on the bestsellers table, so. Yeah, so it's super it's good. Popular. It is smutty. And I like it because it's talking about um, Greek mythology and all of like their gods and goddesses, which is very interesting. I don't know much about Greek mythology. I know like basics, but so that was very interesting to like read about. Um, the next thing I read, I think I've talked about this, is the Inheritance Games. So as you can see, I'm at the final book and I'm only 17% of done <laughs> because it's just like, I have a very hard time with series because I get bored. Mm -hmm. um, so I can do like a book and a sequel, but I have a very hard time with series. So I That's read I am, the yeah. first two and I'm 17% on the last one, but it's super good and it is younger. I think it's YA. I think it's considered young adult, yeah. Because she's young. Um, well, all the characters are like younger, 
but it's about um, riddles and um, all this kind of stuff and you're trying to figure out what's happening. So basically it's this millionaire who leaves his whole fortune to this girl that no has no relation to him, they've never met or anything. So you're trying to figure out why he would leave his whole fortune to her over all his family. Mm-hmm. And then all his family is pissed because <laughs> this is like this random girl. And yeah. it's very interesting. It kind of, if you've ever seen the movie Knives Out, it kind of has a similar vibe to that. Like a, I never saw that. Yeah, no, I know. But I'm just saying it's like with the inheritance and it's like a yeah. whodunit and there's like people are mad. Yeah. and Very it's a whole interesting. Thing. That was also on the bestsellers table. Hmm. This is a book um, I recently read. It's called, it's the middle one. It's called Icebreaker. Mm-hmm. Now, Savannah read this and she's like, oh, you should read it. She's really into hockey romances. I've been in my sports romance era. Um, specifically hockey. Yes. Um, but she was like, you got to read this. So I read it and I like the book. I do. I like the whole thing except yeah, the, ending. the ending. You don't want to spoil it. Yeah. Okay. So if you haven't read it, skip a little. <laughs> and But if you have... What do you guys feel? Because I'm like, the whole thing, she's like, I don't want to get married and get pregnant and blah, blah, blah. And then she ends up doing that. And then she's like, just okay with being pregnant. When the whole book, she was like against that. That was like her last thing she wanted. She wanted to go to the Olympics and she wanted to do all this stuff before she even considered that. But then at the end, she she was pregnant. Yeah, no, it felt like... I mean, it was like an epilogue, so it wasn't yeah. like, it was like a year or two later or something like but that, still, but still. I'm like, that's not that No, long. I remember, so I like give every book like 10 stars mm. because I have no ability to actually rate books other yeah. than really good, but that was like one of the first books that at the end I was like, hmm. I did not like the end. Like, but the whole book was like so good. No, I loved it. No, the whole it. book, the whole book is super good. It's just... She mentions multiple times in the book Mm. that that's not what she wants. And, like, her coach got pregnant, and her coach was like, don't do the same thing that I did, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And But then she does. She does. Yeah. And also the friend character, the guy she's skating with, is awful. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, he is toxic AF. But basically, she's a figure skater, and her romance is with a hockey player. So that's kind of a fun. Yeah, but I was like surprised like reading the book that she gave the friend so many chances. Yeah. Because I was just like. No, I mean poor decision making, but yeah, that makes it good. Yeah, (laughs) but so that was very interesting. I like the book except the ending. And then recently, so I just finished the first book, King of Wrath. And well, Savannah's read both of them, but I just read the first one, King of Wrath. And then I'm starting the second one, King of Pride. That's also very good. That is an arranged marriage, which is very interesting. I like that kind of stuff when they're mm-hmm. like enemies to lovers. Uh, so that's very interesting on the arranged marriage part. And it's forced proximity. Too. And it's forced proximity. So he not happy that he has to marry her. Mm. She's not happy either, but there's this huge reason that she doesn't know that he does so, so basically he's he's being forced to marry this girl right and she's like oh my god like i don't want to marry him blah 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 but he's like they're forcing and blackmailing me into marrying this girl but she doesn't know that he's being blackmailed into marrying mm-hmm. her so she's just like oh like this sucks i don't want to marry him but he's like i hate her and her family and I'm going to take them down. Mm-hmm. So it's very interesting. Um, and I really liked that. So I'm going to start yeah. the second book. Yeah. And that is one of my recommendations from my Kindle. So mm-hmm. it's like a spinoff series of... Let me pull it up. Um, this is Anna Huang. And it's a spinoff series of the Twisted series. Um, and so there's four books of those. I think you read one and a half? No. Just one? I don't even know if I got through the first one. Okay. I thought you started the second one. Did I? Oh, I did. Okay, yeah, yeah I did. I knew you did. So I read the first book and I started the second one. But again, it's like with the series, I got bored. Well, I mm. stopped reading it for a little while and then I'm like, 
I'm just gonna start sending you instead. But see, see, okay, so here they are. So we've got Twisted Love, Twisted Games, Twisted Lies, and Twisted Hate. Yes. Um, the thing is, these are all like considered individual standing books. So they're not like the typical series. It's not like it yeah. ends somewhere and then it starts. You could read any of these alone, but it helps to read them in the order of Twisted Love, Games, Hate, and Lies. Because they're all in each other's. Yes, because they're all, it's so like, these are four best girlfriends. Um, and like each of their love stories basically, um, mm -hmm. which I loved that and then I found out there were sh These like very minor side characters and these books became the characters of Twisted Hate or not Twisted Hate King of Wrath King of Pride Yeah, um, so I do definitely recommend that series and that is like super spicy um, Very I, spicy series. I don't really remember The first book I read mm, the that. first one's definitely like one of the worst ones I don't exactly I think remember. One. I didn't know it was a spinoff. But yeah. Savannah was like, oh my god, you have to read yeah. King of Wrath. And I'm like, okay, you convinced me. Well, and her writing it. style has gotten so much better over the years. So, like, the first one is my least favorite. Mm. Um, the last one, Twisted Lies, is my personal favorite. Um, yeah, really liked it a lot. So, and those yeah. are all, like, very much so. So, gotta read the trigger warnings with these. Um, but they're very much so, like, dominating alpha male like very toxic so like in a book it's nice but in real life like no. i know we talk about that and we're like oh my god like in the book like wow it's so like, cool that's but so no. like ooh, like ooh. yeah and, but then in, like in real life if anyone were to say no. any of that to me hard pass i'd be like excuse me i would scream and run the other way <laughs> seriously i'd be scared for my life yeah so yeah definitely look at the trigger warnings with these yeah um because they are a bit intense um but i still i still like them yeah so because they're like, a little they're a little mafia romance ooh, a couple yeah. of them um that's the also first very interesting. one the first one and the fourth one are like mafia romance and then the second one is princess bodyguard romance. And then the third one is like hardcore enemies to lovers. So mm -hmm. if you like any of those tropes, yeah, those are really fun. Yeah, but definitely look up the trigger warnings for any of the books. Yeah, they're on the first page, so you can't go far yeah. without seeing them. So yeah. but I'm in like all the books that we're talking about. Yeah, just like definitely. for your peace of mind. No, out of all the ones we recommend, those are the ones that would like happen. Yeah. yeah. So those are kind of like authors. That we like. And like series, I guess, that we've been mm -hmm. reading. And now Savannah has pulled some from her like different like tropes. Tropes. So they're they're different authors. Okay. Okay, so this genre or trope is books that will make you sob. Um this just happens to be the same author. Mackenzie will never read these. No, I'm like, I don't want to read a book to make me sad. Yeah. Like I wanted to take a book and take me on an adventure or like somewhere else like I don't want to read it and make me sad yeah. well to be fair sense. I bought this book not knowing what it was um and it like it was one of those books I thought about for like three weeks after oh this is the light we lost by Jill Santopolo um and so I read this probably three or four years ago now I don't exactly remember what it's about but basically um it's their whole title is like two lives two choice wait Two lives, two loves, one choice. So it's kind of like One True Loves with Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, she kind of has like this old like college guy that she was with who was like this like ultimate love and now she's like older and like has someone else. And then like the opportunity comes back mm. for that guy. Um, excellent, excellent book. And then- If you wanna sob. If you wanna sob. And then More Than Words, also by Jill Santapolo. Um, I don't even, which one was this? Ah, yes, okay. <laughs> See, I've read like so many hundreds of books in the last couple years. Can't even remember. But anyways, I cannot even tell you anything about this book, to be honest. But I just remember it is heart-wrenching in the best way. So those are books that will like, I will, will always make me cry. Yikes. Okay, next category we have sports romance. You're also going to have to look on your Kindle. Yes. So I have, I have a lot of my Kindle, but these are two I have in person. So we have Icebreaker, which Mackenzie just talked about, which is mm -hmm. hockey ice skater romance. Yeah. So I think that's an excellent one. It has tons of reviews and like, there's a reason. It's a great book. It is. Um, another person also just author, this is a whole series. I only read the first one was The Deal by L. Kennedy. I think this is a series. This is called the Off Campus series. Yes. Yeah. So they have like the mistake, the score, the goal, the legacy. So I think there's like five or eight of these. Um, but this is the first one. This is also a hockey romance. 
um and so this is like if I'm remembering correctly yeah Hannah and Garrett yeah so this is a book like she's like the theater nerd and he is Ooh. like the profession he's like about to be an at or NHL player cool so super good I really like that that's got some spice in it and then this is a more wholesome one um this is the cheat sheet by Sarah Adams really like this so these are lifelong friends so this is an ultimate friends to lovers mm -hmm. um and he's an NFL player so a football player and she's a ballerina um and so they've he's like been denying his feelings for her forever oh. and she this is one of those books that um actually made me laugh out loud which is not Rare. common for me I do not laugh out loud like no. even in funny movies no. um it's just she's in my head like... <laughs> it's in my head but this book she's so awkward and like she avoids confrontation or interaction <laughs> at any cost and she makes a fool of herself um so this is funny I really like this book but one thing about this is she's low-key a pick-me girl where she's like, I only have guys as friends. Like, girls are too much drama and, like, stuff like that. So that's kind of her vibe in this book a little bit. What it, what that's what that? it is. It's, like, girls that, like, shit on other girls and are, like, only friends with guys and stuff like that. Like, pick me. I'm a, I'm a guy's girl. Okay. okay, I have never heard of that before. Okay. Yeah, but she's kind of low-key that. But, like, if you can get over that, it's a great book. Mm -hmm. um, some other... Sorry, Savannah teaches me so much because I'm not on social media. I know. I have. To, I like make lists of stuff to inform her of because, when things happen. Because she gets me up on all the lingo because I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Pick me, girl. Yeah. Um, some other sports romances I well, love so much. Well, Savannah's specifically been in hockey romance. Yes. Like hockey has been my thing. I think they're the most attractive sports players mm. for sure. Um, one of my best friends recommended this to me. It's the middle one. It's called From Lukov with Love. Um, so this is actually an ice skater romance. Um, definitely enemies to lovers, competitors, um, which is actually a very fun trope because they're constantly trying to win mm. against each other. Um, so From Lukov with Love is definitely the best figure skater romance I've ever read. Um, Icebreaker again. And then, oh, one I really liked, <laughs> which is also a series, it's called it's right up here in the corner. It's called Pucked by Helena Hunting. The main character girl, she was shocking the things she was saying. I'm like, it almost seemed unrealistic, like someone would actually act like that because she was so abrasive. Oh. Uh, but I still really liked it. Um, but that was a great hockey romance. And then a series I, I just recently read, super, super, like, um, it's so corny, but I have, I, I like every book I read. I literally don't dislike mm -hmm. a book. Um, so I liked it, but this might have horrible reviews. I don't even know. Um, but this is called the Swift Hat Trick Trilogy. Um, wow. but the first book, that's a mouthful. mouthful. But the first book is Lucky Hit, and then it's Blissful, Blissful Hook, and then Vital Blindside. Um, but these are, this is like a friend group and hockey romance. Um, so those are my favorite sports romances I've read recently. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And then the next, next category is historical, historical fiction. Um, so a lot of Taylor Jenkins reads could be considered historical fiction as well. Um, so like this one and this one, particularly Daisy Jones and the Six, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but also Malibu Rising. Um, but outside of that, this is one of my favorite books I've ever read. Uh, this is called Park Avenue Summer by Renee Rosen. And this is about a woman working in like Wall Street, New York City in 1965. And it's basically about her being a woman in a male dominated industry. Mm. Um, and so a lot of themes of like inequality and toxic masculinity and stuff like that. But it was like a very empowering book. I really, really liked this. And she's working at Cosmopolitan Magazine, which makes it Ooh, really, really fun. That is um, fun. I read this. My mom read it immediately after me. She also loved it. I said my mom. Our mom. <laughs> um, and then another book I really love. This is an author I recommend. I have like three or four of her books up here. Is Beatrice Williams. All of her books are historical fictions. This one particularly is Cocoa Beach. Another one I really love is 100 Summers. Um, again, not really light read here. They definitely have like heavier themes, but this is... 1917 in France. Um, so this is about a woman that, is this the one I'm thinking of? Yes, she like meets a man while like she's from France and meets 
a military guy, like, during the First World War. Um, oh, that's definitely not light. Yeah, no, it's not light at all, but it's excellent. Um, and so they moved to Cocoa Beach, and it's, like, her life oh. and, like, moving there. Uh, so, yeah, she, any of her books are good. Yeah. Next category is young adult. So other than um, inheritance games, is technically young adult. Games. So definitely. Um, I recommend also, I talked about it. I'm going to link the video because I talked about the books. Um, all of your old favorites. Yeah, yeah. my old favorites, the so YA. Yeah. Um, and it's the Natural series. Great series. That's like one of the only series I finished. And that's I the same it. author of the Inheritance Games. Yes, same author. So we have you know, a real fan over here. Real fan. Um, but my favorite young adult series of all times, I will stand by this forever, is The Hunger Games by Suzanne, Suzanne Collins. I have been obsessed with these books since they came out. I remember reading them in grade school went to all of the midnight premieres of the movies. I'm obsessed. I've got the whole series here. And this is the only book in my entire life I've ever had multiple copies of um, because I love it that much. So I highly recommend Hunger Games. I finally got Mackenzie to watch the movies for the first time last year. I did. Um, super Which good. I'm surprised they're kid movies. Well, they're young adults, so yeah. yeah, but they definitely got some deep topics, which I like. Um, one of our favorite books. This is also a book I talked about on that other video. Yeah. So I won't go into too much detail. Yeah. But Stolen oh. by Lucy Christopher. Freaking love. Um, I think if I read it now, I might feel differently. I, mean, I think because so. Because it's like, as a kid, I was like, oh my god, amazing. Uh, this is about a, a girl that gets kidnapped and has Stockholm Syndrome and falls in love with her captor. Yeah. Um, really, really interesting. It's set in like the Australian outback, which yeah. is also kind like of a in cool the setting. Of nowhere. Um, yeah. and so I feel like I've never read books that were set in that setting. Um, and so we loved excellent that book. book. Yeah. Loved that book. And then what do we have next? Oh, okay. This is one of my favorite categories, something I've recently gotten into. This is the slow burn category. So this is like, you know, it's not until like the last three quarters of the book that they even kiss kind of slow burn, you know, okay. which is not normally my style. Um, but I've really liked it. And this author has some other books that I need to pick up. But this is Shipped by Angie Hockman. Um, and so this is like enemies to lovers, I would consider, uh, like workplace romance kind of vibe. Um, but they are like, what are they called? Um, they're on like a cruise for their work. Um, okay. So like, to do photography and talk it's like a travel company um mm -hmm. so this is like not even set in a workplace which nice. is also kind of fun but yeah i i really loved this book it was an excellent slow burn when you get out of the workplace that's when things get spicy mm -hmm. especially on a cruise i mean into a tropical yeah. island uh, this is <laughs> this is to the galapagos which was cool um this is the best slow burn i've ever read this is you deserve each other by sarah hoggle that's on my list i know you need to read I it i did not know you had that i'm obsessed with this book this is about second chance romance. So they're actually already, are they engaged? Yeah, they're engaged, they're not married yet. But like they live together already and it's like they're falling out of love. And it's like what they do oh. to fall back into love. Um, so it's actually very, very sweet. Definitely, again, like last 25% of the book is when, you know, they kiss and like stuff actually picks up. Um, but excellent slow burn. So these are some of my older books, because um, as you can tell, I've been in my romance era, but these are some of my favorite thrillers I've read. Um, so this is Something in the Water. This is great. This is by who? Catherine Stedman, yeah. Um, and this is basically about, right, so they go on their honeymoon to Bora Bora, and they find a bag full of, like, money and weapons, and what? they, like, bring it back with them. Why and would you bring it back? It's very stupid, but it's like about what happens to them afterwards, and there's all these lies and secrets and things like that. Oh, that sounds um, interesting. I might want to read that. Yeah. No, Mom read this. Really, really interesting book. Another one I love. This is this author. Generally, I have one of her other books here. But I'm pretty sure this is actually like two sisters or two friends. It's not even one person. Um, this is The Last Mrs. Parrish. This book threw me for a loop. This is basically about... Um, this family in like the Hamptons, so very rich family. The woman like comes in and is like scheming their family. Um, she like wants to be with the husband. She wants to be the new Mrs. Parrish. Um, but then you find out all of these shocking things about why she's the last Mrs. Parrish. 
Um, oh. Super crazy book for me for Loop. It is excellent. And as you can see, most of my books are on like bestsellers Reese. lists. I like Reese's book, um, book club the best. Those are my favorites, but they're good for a reason. And then lastly, um, this is a great book. This is The Couple Next Door. Basically, they have, there's like a big, um, they have a dinner with all their neighbors and then someone dies. Ruh -ruh. And it's uh, it's a whodunit. Um, because I it's love like, a whodunit. It was, everyone was in the dark and like couldn't see everything and like power went out and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so this is an excellent book. Another honorable mention would be, where is it? My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. Very, very similar vibes. I've read a lot of like, um, like books along the lines of like there's a couple someone dies who done it um so those two are excellent last category last category so this last category are the category is two of my favorite books of all time <laughs> um and so the other ones i would put in here are these two i've already mentioned them but these are some of my favorite books of all time i think they were so well done um but aside from those where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This is an excellent book. It is set in the South, which kind of, you know, gives me homey vibes because we're from the South. Um, and yeah, it, it's excellent. And it's just about this girl's journey through life and love and stuff like that. Um, obviously there are problematic parts with this. Um, I don't know if you know this, the author is wanted for murder. Yes, this is like a 60, Sorry, or, 60 or 70 year old woman. Yeah, she's wanted for murder. Um, in real life? Like in real life, yeah. This is not a part of the book. So there, there, people have very strong opinions on this, but I still think it's a very well-written book regardless of the author. <laughs> regardless of the author herself. Um, this is the stuff, like, Savannah asking me more because I have freaking no idea what's yeah, going on. No, she's she's wanted for a murder. Um, so Recently? Like, no, it was a murder, like, it was like 30 years ago or something. That she's, so this like, is literally a book about her. Kind right? of. Um, yes, because this is like a this is like a murder mystery, um, and this was also turned into a movie, which I thought was pretty well done. Uh, again, with Easy Edgar what? Jones. Um, but yeah, so you know, you look up look up reviews before you read it because it might not be your thing. But I still think if you put everything aside, it's a well written book. This is my favorite book of all time. I hold a lot of weight behind that because I don't agree in favorites. I don't believe in favorites most of the time. But I read this a couple months ago. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is truly an absolute masterpiece. I've been trying to get Mackenzie to read it for months. It's a big book, you know, she's yeah. she's pretty thick. So I, that, I had on my bookshelf, I think, for two years before I actually read it, because um, I have a huge TBR. But this is excellent. This is um, basically, this is not spoiling anything, this is on the back. Um, basically, it's a woman who makes a deal with the devil and this is not like about religion or anything, but she makes a deal with the devil, the dark spirits, if you will. And it, the sacrifice is that no one can remember her, right? And so she's born in the 1700s in France, makes her way to New York City. This is set between those two times um, in 2014. And then one day she goes into a store and the guy says, oh, I remember you. And she hasn't been remembered by a single person in 300 years. Mm -hmm. And so it is a romance. It is heartbreaking, it is historical, it is her venturing through life being unmemorable. Um, it is- And that's why I'm not gonna read it because it, it sounds is really sad. so, so, so good. It is so well written. This is my first book from this author. I actually just bought this whole um, The Shades of Magic series because I need to read more. I'm I've actually heard a lot about that. Yes. So yeah. No, I'm really excited. We we will come back to that. But yeah, it says a life no one will remember, a story you will never forget. So it is, it is so 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 well written, and I'm truly obsessed with this. I could talk about this forever, and I just I love it so much. So that's my number one book. I recommend to everyone. And this is like, this is not, this is a fantasy which is not in my wheelhouse at all. I she never read fantasy. fantasy. Um, but this is like so well done. That is actually my favorite book. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, so those are some of the books. Well, for me, those are the books I've kind of recently read. Um, Cause a lot of my books are back in the Midwest. Um, but these are some of Savannah's like all time favorite 
books yeah an author she recommends so I mean I hope that you guys find at least <laughs> one book in here that you guys would want to read yeah um and if you guys want us to go into detail like full on like discuss the book like a book a full club. review yeah that would yeah be fun. we could do like a full book club on a book and we could reread the book and then give us we would give you like our opinions on it i think that could be really that would fun. be really fun i would um, enjoy that because we tend to read similar books mm -hmm. um so we could both read a book and then do like a whole like review and if you guys read the book too then yeah it would be amazing so these are kind of the books that we've read recently slash love slash we recommend so thanks so much for watching i hope to see you guys next time and please let us know if you want to do if you want us to do like a full in-depth book review mm -hmm. on any of these because we would love to we talk about books all We're the time very down for that um and, and I tell just us don't your post. favorite books yeah too. tell us your favorite books below what do you recommend we're both in our like rom com area mm -hmm. maybe more romance and rom com mm -hmm. i used to only be thrillers for years and but I, we like thrillers we like yeah. historical fiction yeah i'm willing to try anything yes and i like fantasy so mm -hmm. go ahead recommend a book below that you think that we would like we would love to know and thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time Bye. Bye.